moving on to differential calculus. So when we talk about differential calculus, we're talking about rates of change. We're talking about measuring and modeling the way things change. And our foundation for this is what we call a limit. So what is a limit? A limit describes the output of a function, which would be to say something like f of x, as the input of the function, which would just be x, approaches a given value from both the left and the right. And our notation for that is the limit as x approaches some value, we'll call it a, of f of x. And you'll see what I mean with this in a minute. Uh, we'll see some examples in a second. What we want to learn, what we want to kind of take as our, our main rule here for limits is that the limit does not care what the actual function value is. It only cares about what it looks like it should be or what it looks like it's gonna be. Right? The limit kind of stops short before the function value to say, well, it looks like we're gonna get there, so we're just gonna assume that it's gonna get there. And again, you'll see this with a graphical example a little bit later on, but I wanna walk through a couple other things first. So we've got our limit notation here, right? And I want to expand on that just a little bit because we talked about taking the limit from the left and from the right, and we have a way to notate that. So if I take the limit as x approaches a from the left, I've got that little superscript minus sign there. So this is the limit, use, keep my color scheme this in, this is the limit from the left, starting on the left, moving toward the right. Likewise, I can use this little superscript plus, and that represents the limit from the right. And we call these one-sided limits. Okay, I'm starting on the right, I'm moving to the left. Those are what we would call one-sided limits. And the big theorem, is that the limit as x approaches a, so what we would maybe call the overall limit, is equal to some number that we'll call l. If and only if, meaning this statement can read both directions, if and only if the limit from the left and the limit from the right are both equal to the same thing, and that same thing is that number l. Right, so we read the sentence both ways. The limit overall equals L if both of the one-sided limits equal L and vice versa. Both of the one-sided limits equal L imply that the limit overall is L. Let's put this into context because I think it's going to make more sense this way. So find the given limits for the function shown graphically below. Um, let's see. We want to start with the limit of the function as x approaches 3 from the left. So let's find 3. Here's 3. I'm just going to draw. Actually, yeah, we'll use the highlighter. Here's 3. So as I approach 3 from the left, what number am I approaching? So as I'm coming from the left, I'm following this way, and I'm following just my function starting on the left, moving to the right, and I look like I'm approaching zero. So my limit as I'm coming from the left, as x approaches three, is zero. Now we want to look at it from the right. So same idea, if I start on the right hand side of my function and move toward three, it looks like I'm approaching three again. So this would also be zero. And because my two one-sided limits are equal to each other, then my limit overall as just x approaches three is zero. So we always want to check both sides. Real quick, this isn't part of our little problem set here, but just so I can show you what I'm talking about, a case where this wouldn't exist, let's talk about the limit as x approaches negative three in this 
in this graph. So just to kind of make my point here, right here is negative 3. And we see that as I approach the graph from the left, I'm getting bigger and bigger, tending toward infinity, positive infinity. So from the left, we're approaching infinity. From the right, this way, we're approaching negative infinity. Well, those are not equal. So when, we, when they don't line up, we can't really draw a conclusion. So we would say that that limit does not exist, DNE. And then one more example just to kind of prove my point from before, saying that we don't care about what the actual function value is. Let's see what happens when I take the limit as x approaches 1. So here's 1. And well, the limit from the left, as I approach it from the left, it looks like I'm heading toward a function value of 1, right? So as x approaches 1, my function value in this case approaches 1. And then from the right, we notice the same thing, that it also approaches 1. So my limit overall, because both sides are equal, is, is 1. But the function value is not 1. Here is my function value. My function value is 3. So our conclusion here is just to say that the limit of the function at a function value, or at some value a, is not always equal to the actual function value. Right? The limit doesn't care what the actual function value is. The limit just cares about what it looks like. The function value will most likely be based on what it's noticing before, right? We're getting closer and closer and closer and closer to 1. So we can assume with some confidence that, yeah, it's probably going to get to 1. Likewise, on the other side, right? It's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to 1. So we'll just kind of assume that it actually does get there. And in this case, it, it doesn't.